Welcome viewers, welcome you all to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well with your families during this COVID-19 pandemic by using mask and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, today our topic is a talus fracture and subtalar dislocation. Very tricky topic and very important topic. We used to miss this topic. So this is very important for all level doctors. And we're going to discuss about the talus fracture and subtalar dislocation in our program today. And our honorable uh, presenter is Dr. Sundar Rajan, sir, a head of arthroscopy and foot and ankle Ganga Hospital, as well as former president, Indian Foot and Ankle Society. Uh, sir, welcome, welcome you to our show. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We, have, uh, we have also our very learned academic panel, uh, one from Bangladesh, that is Professor Jahangir Alam, sir, uh, the treasurer of Bangladesh Orthopedic Society and country representative of foot and ankle of Apoa, welcome, sir. Welcome to our show. And another one is uh, from Calcutta, very popular surgeon, Dr. Raji Brahman, consultant, orthopedic surgeon, and a specialist in sports medicine from Joint and Bone Care Hospital. Uh, Dr. Raji Brahman, sir. Sir, welcome. Welcome to our show. Uh, dear viewers, uh, it's a great pleasure for us uh, to have all the learned people with us. And Talus fracture and subtalar dislocation. Very tricky fracture and very tricky subtalar dislocation. So we need to know about these things. So I don't want to spend any more time. Now I would like to request our honorable presenter, uh, Dr. Sundar Sir, very dynamic surgeon, very enthusiastic surgeon. And I would like to request our honorable presenter to start his presentation. Dr. Uh, Sundar Sir, please. Uh, thank you, Tanvir, uh, Rajiv, and all our friends. Uh, hope you can uh, see my screen, Tanvir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We can see your screen. Okay. So I think the talus bone is a unique bone compared to the all other bones in our body because it doesn't have any muscle attachment. And we know that the two third of uh, talus bone are articular surfaces. So that makes it a very unique bone because when you do a fixation or a plate with the screws, make sure, we had to make sure that we had to uh, put the screws and plates only the 40% of the remaining bone. And they are very typically articulating with the four joints. So you have four articulations of the talus bone and usually it is held in place with only strong ligaments. Yes, there are no muscles. And also it has got a precarious blood supply. Yes, all of us aware that it has got branches from the anterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery, and peroneal arteries. But as I, as I already we know that the, one of the important problem in the pro, uh, fractures are uh, uh, lo losing its blood supply and going for avascular necrosis and collapse. So what is the mechanism of injury? Usually the talus fractures are high violence injury. It happens because of the hyperdosifluxion, high violence injury, because of the axial loading, and because of the high violence, 25 to 30 percent of them are open injuries. That makes it still more difficult in managing these kind of fractures. Take this example. This is a case of a, a ankle injury. As you see the X-ray here, there is a small fracture over here, tip of the fibula. So it was put on plaster. The same patient presented after six weeks, walking on the cost and presenting like this. So you can see here is completely there is a fracture in the body of the talus and complete collapse. If we retrospectively go and see, then if care very carefully, you can see there are some lines over here that there is an undisplaced fracture because it was not recognized and made them full weight bearing walking, resulting in a, such a bad fracture and collapse, resulting and uh, uh, and these kind of situations are very, very difficult to manage once you come to these kind of situations. So it is important to understand and to recognize the talus fracture or if you are not careful, if you are not diagnosing properly, they may end up like this. So it's important if you have any doubt, you still you, you can put on a non mud bearing at least so this, this patient doesn't collapse with this fracture. What are all the x-rays to be taken in talus fractures? Of course, standard anteroposterior and lateral view helps. 
at the same time the canal view that is an uh, slight oblique view will oblique view helps you to know the neck fractures with the medial combination because that is very very important in managing talus fracture to maintain the medial length of the talus so in the, in the canal view also helps in intraoperative assessment and fixing these fractures so any intraarticular fractures nowadays we know like a calcaneal fracture or an a, a, a proximal tibia fracture or a distal femur fracture we know that all these fractures intraarticular fractures require a ct scan because the ct scan can give you all the type of the fracture plans uh, i mean the three i mean the three dimensional views at the same time it can help you to find out if there is a loose fragments in the subtalar joints that can be easily missed when you fix the talar fracture and any kind of subluxations or dislocation the subtalar joint can be very easily missed if you don't do a ct scan so that's why any patient, many patients present lately if they present after treating with the talus fracture with the neglected subtalar dislocation that's why i heard at a topic name talus fracture with the subtalar dislocations so any talus fracture you have to make sure that your subtalar joint and talus neglected joint are intact after fixing the talus so that's why i added a subtalar dislocation so that you just as you as a junior doctor if you are a budding doctor you should aware that all the talus fracture make sure that you are making the talus neglected joint all right taking this patient as example is a 25 years old female patient presented with the pain in the left foot and ankle for two months following fall from a two wheeler so you were stitched you were stitched with the plaster of paris for two weeks then after that she was left and made them made them to walk because this was the x ray was taken at the time if you see this x ray carefully here you may think that okay we think it's so normal there is no fracture so we may neglect this fracture the same patient uh, presented after two months we can see that patient is walking on that but if you see the clinical view from the behind very carefully you see the right side and see the left side the right side in the heel is in valgus but if you see the left side it is in the varus so you may you should know that there is some abnormality is going on if you take some oblique views then you know there is a subluxation sorry dislocation of the talus navicular joint and the subtalar joint you can see that the place is completely empty over there the talus is empty uh, over the navicular bone so that indicates that this patient had a subtalar dispute subtalar dislocation without fracture so retros retrospectively if we go behind and see here you see this view you, there is a calcaneum is not aligned with the, the talus over here and also you see here talon navicular joint there is a overlap so if you had identified earlier then these patients may have been reduced on day 1 with the close reduction that so that that the uh, uh, the outcome of the patient would have been very good by the two months time but this was neglected for two months so any patients you suspect a subtalar dislocations or if you do even if you are not sure of then then do a ct scan any talus fracture any subtalar dislocation ct scan must ct scan will give you that you can see that there is a where where is the talus head here this is the navicular it's completely dislocated and this patient also had a cuboid fracture that can be identified by ct scan you see that uh, sagittal view shows the fracture dislocation of the talus navicular joint here and also you can see that axial view so the subluxed subluxed dislocated dislocated this uh, subtalar joint because it's two months over now we cannot do a close reduction so this patient is required a walk on reduction to do the reduction you can see that both talar navicular and uh, subtalar joints held with the pin uh, and also it's very important anything with the talus fractures i mean with the, your uh, talus fracture if you are fixing you have to do the ap lateral oblique it is important that you should take the saltsman view also so that make sure that at the end of it your subtalar joint is maintained you know that halcanium is slightly displaced lateral to the talus so make sure that anatomy is maintained after fixing the talus here coming back to the talus fracture when do you operate that is the major concern in our mind it is important whenever you see a talus fracture try to reduce early and fix it up before it can present like this because it is possible they can have this kind of issue because they were neglected with long time or are the presenting with late uh, with uh, severe violence so it is very very important in any talus fracture to observe the skin and soft tissue condition we should not worry 
uh, about the uh, fractured avascular necrosis because people are concerned whether to do an operate immediate or late. People think that if you operate late, the talus may go for avascular necrosis. But we should not worry about it because the, the rate of osteonecrosis was not related to the timing of fixation, but rather to the initial degrees of the fracture displacement and presence of the open injury. So don't worry about the avascular necrosis. If you fix in six hours or fix after two days, it doesn't make any difference. That is because of the initial assault to the blood supply to the talus at the time of injury. So the more important uh, here, not the avascular necrosis, the skin and soft tissue condition. So as already told, the literature has shown the timing has no significance in creating in getting the avascular necrosis. But more important than that, skin necrosis, wound deviations and infections are associated with the 70 to 80 percent of the talus fracture. So if you are worried about the swelling, you delay the fixation. You can put an external fixator, wait for one week or 10 days time also, it doesn't matter. Then once the skin becomes soft, then you can do the surgery. What approach to use? So that can be dictated by only fracture pattern. You cannot decide whether the medial side or lateral side. You should see the degree and location of, of the combination. You should look for whether it needs a medial uh, malleolar osteotomy or a lateral malleolar osteotomy. And it's very important to reduce and visualization that are all very, very, very important. And also make sure that maintain the soft tissues as much as possible to preserve the vascular supply. So it can be a single approach or a dual approach, whether the medial side or a lateral side. But most often nowadays, we may require to do a dual approach to get a proper anatomy. So this is a typical medial approach where you do just over the medial centering over the medial malleolus, just expose the joint. And because many times medial malleolus might have been fractured or we may need to do osteotomy, which I'll come back later. Or this is the lateral approach. I think all of you are aware about, about it. So depending upon the fracture pattern, you may need to do a medial side or the lateral side, but many times you may need to do a dual approach or you can do even single anti nowadays people uh, do through the midline incision anterior approach so that you can see both the medial and the lateral side. When you come to the talar head fractures, they are, they are only three to five percent of all talar fracture. Usually it happens because in the flying accidents or hyperdosiflexion or hyperpantaflexion, CT scan may need if there is a combination. So if it is undisplaced, we can treat conservatively. If it is an, uh, a displaced fracture, you can uh, do a open reduction. This is the, you can see the talar head fracture. Usually it's a very rare, but you can fix with just four amount cancellous screws. And uh, this is the case with the good functional outcome fixed with that. But most important in talar fractures, what, what we get commonly is the neck fracture. Neck fracture classification by Hawkins is, helps us, helps you, helps you know the identify the fracture pattern and the prognosis. You can see the type 1 neck fracture is undisplaced. All of us know that. Type 2 is fracture with the subtalar uh, subluxation or a dislocation. Type 3 is with both fracture with the subtalar and also the tibiotalar joint dislocation. And type 4 along with the talar navicular dislocation. So when you come to the neck fracture type 1, where you have an undisplaced fracture, I would advise always to do a percutaneous screw fixation so that make sure that you don't need to immobilize these fractures in equinus. So percutaneous fixation helps you to obviate the need of casting in equinus and minimize the incidence of loss of close, uh, close reduction. When you come to the type 2, where it is associated with the subtalar or dislocations, you can, uh, you can do a closed reduction or an open reduction depending upon the fracture pattern. But most often, you can sometimes convert the type 2 by type 1 by doing the traction and plantar flexion by manipulation and we can do a percutaneous screw fixation. You can accept less than 5 mm displacement with angulation of 5 degrees or less is acceptable. So this is a case of type 2 fractures. We can see this is the medial sided injury. Already the medial malleolus is fractured. That is the talar neck fracture. Here already it is fractured. So when you do a medial approach, it is easy to see the talar fracture and you fix it with the two screws here. Then finally you fix with the medial malleolar screw for your medial malleolus fracture. But at the same, and when you come to the type 3 fracture, this is the associated with the tibio talus dislocation. 
here the violence is more heavier than the type 2 so these patients require a surgical access, uh, uh, emergency because you see that the talar body is completely displaced posteriorly over there this needs immediate reduction it's like any dislocation they can be associated with neurovascular injury and more often they are also associated with open injuries so in these cases again the problem in these cases is putting back this big uh, uh, body of the talus into the joint is very very tough because if you see the space here you see the fragment size over here so in these cases you can use a AO distractor or you can apply the steam and pin over the calcaneum like here and give a traction by your assistant that will open up the space here and you can bring back that fragment to the position. Then you identify the fracture fragments. You can see that is the traction. You bring back and put back here over here. Then you fix it with uh, cancellous or cannulated screws. Then you finally you fix that medial malleolus with the two screws. So these cases are very, very uh, difficult to reduce and fracture, I mean, uh, and fix it up. But you may need to do a, a single or a dual approach in this case. But compared to the previous case, again, this is also type 3. But here, the medial malleolus is intact. And also, you can see the ankle joint is dislocated. You can see that body of the talus is uh, extruded posteriorly. So in this case, you had to do a, you see this 3D CT shows that exact configuration of the fracture patterns. Here you have to do a medial malleolar osteotomy. You can insert the two drill bits beforehand, then you take it out, do the osteotomy. You can see that exposes your ex, that extruded fragment over here. Then you give an axial traction with the steam and pin. You can see that assistant is giving. Once you give your traction, Sometimes you may need to put a small steam and pin like a fracture dislocation of the shoulder where if the head is dislocated, you put a steam and pin and try to reduce it. The same way we can put, put back that fragment into the joint. Then you fix the talus with the screws. Then at finally, the medial malleolar osteotomy is fixed with uh, tension band wiring here. So in type 3 fractures, it, you, uh, invariably you need to do a osteotomy if it is not fractured over there. That is the fine functional outcome. This patient also uh, had a, a lateral side repairs. So when you when you put a screws for the talus fracture, they, don't, they do not need to be parallel because both had got different functions. All of us should understand this principle that lateral screw provides the compression while medial screw acts simply as a positional screw. So when you put a screw from the medial side, you should not compress it because when you do the compression on the medial side, it can go for a virus and collapse and resulting in uh, uh, arthritis later. So it is important that when you are uh, using your two screws, you use the lateral screw first, compress it, then use the medial screw as a positional screw. This is another case of the talar neck and body fracture. Again, you see the medial malleolus is intact. You can see the lot of combination on the entirely on the medial side over there. So here you can see that the drill bits were inserted for the osteotomy. Then you fix the talus fracture, come back and fix the middle molar osteotomy with the two screws. That is the final fixation of the talus fracture on that osteotomy side, uh, having the good reduction. So when most often when you have a combination. There's, there are always better to use the dual approach. And nowadays, people started using the mini plates. They are very, very helpful, especially when they have a combination. The plates will help you to hold the fragments as a, uh, under this articular surface to prevent the collapse. At the same time, bone grafting is very, very important. Whenever you see a combination, the bone graftings are essential to prevent the collapse. As you see in this case, you see that mini plate this is the AO diagrammatic uh, picture. It shows the use the mini plate. Whenever there is a lot of medial combination, you should distract, put the bone graft so that you maintain and you and uh, prevent the collapse on the medial side. So uh, prevent the virus collapse. So you can use the one-sided plate, medial plate. There are specific plates are available in nowadays in uh, with many companies. So this is another case of type 3, we open fracture, middle malleolus fracture with the ankle dislocation with the telax fracture. You see here, this patient has got a middle malleolar fracture, fibula fracture. You see the talar level, neck level fracture with the combination. So in these cases, it is important that they have a combined approaches 
both the medial and the lateral side. Of course, CT scan is man. CT scan is mandatory. So this is on the lateral uh, lateral side opened up here. This is the medial side opened up completely. You fix the talus fracture, then you fix this both medial malleolus and the lateral side, and there is a complete healing. Why I'm putting this case is very important. Whenever whenever you have a comminuted fracture, whether it's a pylon fracture or an ankle fracture associated with the talus fracture. You should, after fixation of the both ankle and talus fracture, it is important maintain that distraction of the joint with the external fixator because whenever you have articular comminution, they may tend to get joint can get collapse and will end up in early orthotics. At least six to eight weeks till the fracture consolidate, keep that joint in distraction by external fixator. So that helps you to keep the joint in distraction. This is a one month follow up and that, that the final clinical picture. Uh, good healing over there. This is another patient of 38 years old male patient with a twisting injury at the ankle. Two wheeler had a fall two weeks before. This is the X-ray. If you see the X-ray over here, you may think that AP is normal, lateral is normal. Then you may think that this is a normal X-ray. But if you take an oblique view, then you see that the posterior talar process fracture over here. So it is a very important fracture with the displacement also. So this patient have a persistent pain. He was put on just crepe bandage over there. So this is the one occasion where you can you can see the CT scan helps you to identify the fracture. This is the one occasion where you can go through the posterior approach, posterior medial approach. You can open it up. That is the TP flux analysis longest. Go just lateral to the aperture and fix it up with uh, two cannulated screws or a cancellous screws. Uh, uh, you can see here there is an oblique view. You see the fracture line over there. So uh, you, you, this is very important to identify these posterior fractures too. When you come to the open fracture, the other thing, the most dreadful problem is here infection and late complications. So this is the you can see that that's a completely extruded bone over here and it's open fracture. So here, even though it was uh, uh, debrided very well. The joint was put back over here, but it was not fixed to the screws at the time. It was fixed long time before, maybe many years before, just with the wires, but still joint in very good position over there. But still this patient had survived because the wound was, uh, uh, sorry, not primary closure was done. It was flat, was done, end up in healing very well. This is after 14 months. You can see that uh, talus fracture is healed very well, but you can see some already avascular necrosis. You can see the joint line, some already some early arthritis is taking place. It doesn't matter. It is very important that these extruded bones has to be put back and fixed because even if the arthritis has taken place over here in the X-ray, patient was asymptomatic because even the X-ray shows arthritic changes in the ankle, patient becomes will become symptomatic after many years, most of the patients. So don't worry about the uh, uh, these uh, complications because we need a bone stock later on if he develops arthritis and pain you need to do a fusion when you do a fusion it is important to maintain the height of the joint because it is not it is it is not that just okay anyway i'm doing fusion what the way the hell i have to worry about the height no that is very important because why you have to maintain the normal anatomy if you don't maintain the anatomy here if you do a just a TBO calcaneal fusions, it put a lot of pressure on the telonavicular and calcaneal cuba joint and mid tarsal joint, then they may end up in secondary osteoarthritis very earlier. So it is very, very important to maintain the bone stock. Of course, these patients finally ended up after a few years with uh, fusion. It's okay. But it's at the same time, same kind of situation here, same kind of open dislocation. It was fixed, maintained with the external fixator, but unfortunately, it ended up with the dreadful infection. After doing the flat cover, it ended up an infection. We had to remove the stellus because it was, you can see the flap, it was very unhealthy, repeated infection. Then we had to do a secondary telectomy and do a fusion of the tibio calcaneal fusions. Why I'm putting these two different kind of cases, it's important that you have to counsel the patient whenever you see an open fracture and tell us, and uh, you have to say that chances of com com uh, infection end up in arthritis, ending up in later on fusions are very, very high. So this patient has to be counseled. This is after six months of the fusion. Finally, the healed very well and patient was walking very well. 
so it's very important in any talus fracture the complications of the post traumatic arthritis is the most important don't worry about the avascular necrosis avascular necrosis is not a symptomatic once avascular necrosis collapses it can cause a secondary arthritis even the secondary arthritis only in later years they can have a, they can become symptomatic so if you see the complication the subtalar arthritis in this cases is around 50% tibia tibia joint around 33% in the literature and both in 25% so post traumatic arthritis is twice as common as osteonecrosis so you have to aware of wear a small union so it's very important when you do a fixation you maintain the medial length of the talus so whenever there is a comminution better to do a bone grafting if it is a wear a small union then in the early stages we can do a still revise the fixation with the bone grafting or in the late cases we have to do a open wedge osteotomy finally i meant it is not a case one sir it is the last case which i am showing 27 years old male patient with rotrophic accident with open injury to the right foot you can see this uh, open uh, injury again but here there is no fracture uh, uh, the same kind of uh, uh, ex complete extrusion over here and this was put back this no fracture only the tail complete extruded talus here it was put back here there is lot of controversy in completely extruded talus whether put back or remove it i think the recent literature and also in our experience we knew unless it is very badly contaminated with the fecal or something you have to even there is a kind of moderate contamination you can wash with the antibiotic solutions and you can put back inside the chances of uh, Uh, uh getting avascular necrosis and secondary arthritis are there in the latter by la latter years but we should not worry about that so you should try to put back that talus and fix it here in this case it was put back and primarily close that wound of course this patient you can see there is evidence of arthritis but this is two years but patient is asymptomatic and uh, this is our uh, publication of this reimplantation of the cases uh, where we had a infection in four cases uh, out of i think is a nine cases or something but they they settled well except uh, four patients went for a non union and uh, 10 patients were avian but arthritis around 16 patient so reimplantation and fracture fixation is a feasible option restore the normal hind foot height that is very very important so preserves the bone stock for the future procedure that is why i told you have to put back inside to conclude the fractures with associated dislocations required urgent reduction to avoid the skin necrosis delay the definite fixation to avoid the complication choose the right approach depending upon the combination if there is a medial side you go for the medial sided approach if the lateral side you can do the lateral approach but combine Uh, you can do a even midline approach or medial and lateral dual approaches so the clinical outcome of the talus neck fracture is determined by the severity of the injury and quality of the reduction and internal fixation so that is in our hand of course the severity of injury is not in our hand but it is very very important that you do an anatomical reduction and internal fixation to maximize the outcome for the patient so stabilization of the medial column length is very very important and the longitudinal arch and the debridement of the subtalar joint is very very important the only total avascular necrosis with the collapse of the talar body leads to the inferior results with the need for further surgeries so patients with the displaced neck fracture should be counseled that post traumatic arthritis and chronic pain are expected outcomes even after anatomic reduction and stable fixation especially in open fractures which we have to be uh, aware of and uh, counsel the patients and attenders thank you very much thank you sir uh, thank you for your uh, highly informative and very nice presentation now i would like to request our very learned academic panel professor jahangir alam and dr rajiv ramon sir to share their knowledge regarding this uh, uh, talus fracture and uh, subtalar dislocation now i would like to request uh, professor jahangir alam sir uh, to share his views regarding this topic hello Yes, uh, Dr. Jahangir Alam, sir. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, thank you, Sundarajan, sir, for his brilliant and excellent presentations. And I, I have told previously, I always enjoyed her lecture, and it is brilliant work. And main things is 
in case of talus fracture dislocation main thing is height is very important and any dislocation and subluxation will it reduced or keep it his appropriate positions and then either is fracture or dislocation then fracture and sir has told that yes uh, either it is dislocated or fracture fracture fragments and dislocated fragment keep in the in between tibia and the talus this is the main work and if it is not so much darting then it should be placed in his normal position this is the main things and afterwards it may uh, avian avascular nephritis it may infection it may arthritis don't worry and don't problem and height is the main and again thank you sir for your blind, uh, brilliant presentations and excellent presentation from you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you professor jahangir alam sir uh, for sharing your views with us and now i'd like to request dr rajiv brahman sir uh, to share his knowledge regarding this topic uh, with us uh dr rajiv brahman sir we cannot hear you please unmute your mic unmute yes sir so excellent talk by dr sundar and i think he, he has covered almost all the important uh, points for talus fracture and if you see the talus fracture they are rare but very potentially devastating injury and it requires a comprehensive understanding of the unique osteology vasculature and surrounding anatomy that is important and the most important part what sundar told is that is urgent reduction of the displaced fracture and the dislocation remains the standard uh, 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 care, uh, standard care in our protocol and the second most important thing is what is very important is when you are dealing with this uh, talar dislocation or a subtalar dislocation always 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 be conscious about the soft tissue and the neurovascular structure and the, sometimes if you are having a soft tissue so yes delayed definitive fixation is the treatment of choice ct is the imaging modality of choice because most of the time you want to uh, know what is the fracture pattern whether there is a medial combination or there is a lateral combination uh, combination and when you are dealing with a comminuted talar neck or talar body fracture i think the take home message should be that dual incision is the best method because you can address the medial compartment you can address the lateral compartment and complications are very common and most common complication you see is the osteonecrosis and post traumatic arthritis uh, but i think we should not delay the treatment and if you delay the treatment or if you neglect this treatment then the complication rates are quite high and i would like to summarize that talus fractures poses a treatment challenges with uh, initial injury and potential sequelae but what is important is, uh, is the decision making and that is very much important whether you will approach this fracture through the medial side you will approach this fracture through the lateral side whether you will go for a screw from the posterior to anterior part or the anterior to posterior part and this decision making is very important so one question for dr sundar so how do you decide about the medial malleolar osteotomy whether it you make it transverse osteotomy or a oblique osteotomy or a step cut osteotomy for medial opening No, I I I don't do a step cut osteotomy, but the most often I do the oblique osteotomy. Uh, so the healing and the stability is better when you do an oblique osteotomy uh, rather than the transverse osteotomy. So I always do a oblique osteotomy. So whenever there is a fracture, most of the most of the time when there is a medial combination, you will have a medial malleolus fracture. But uh, it is not. But uh, so it's very very important. You should know how to do an osteotomy. If you want to treat a talus fracture, if you don't know how to do an osteotomy, medial malleolus osteotomy, you cannot treat a talus fracture. That is the one of the important learning point in talus fracture. Another simple important point which I want to make it for the junior doctors, uh, it is especially calcaneum and talus are the bones. It's very very you may not understand for the first twenty thirty cases what is happening inside. Especially you are a senior surgeon, does the case if you watch. it is very difficult to understand which articular surface is dealing because it has got so much articular surfaces especially when you see a type 3 fracture you may not know which is that which fragment which is middle fragment to configure it into the position and make it a talus bone itself is a tough 
tough job. The fixation is much. To bring back all the fragments and put back as a body of the talus is a very, very tough situation. So I would advise any junior doctor, if you want to fix the talus fracture, you should have seen at least 20 cases. Make sure that you know the proper anatomy and you should know the two approaches, both medial and lateral approaches. And the fourth point is you should know the osteotomy, uh, medial malar osteotomy. Otherwise, you will struggle a lot, lot, and you will not do the justification for the talus fixation. These five points are very, very important. Oh, that was that was uh, nice information, sir. Sir, I have one question, sir. Uh, sometimes uh, we want to see the Hawkins sign in the uh, uh, X-ray. Uh, is it possible to see the Hawkins signs always in the X-ray? So, as in my opinion, as I said, I mean, already I told in the literature also, don't worry about that avascular necrosis. It bound to happen. Even if it happens, it's a good sign only. Sometimes if we see a Hawking sign, it's a good sign. So we don't need to worry about the Hawking sign. And second point is about the avascular necrosis. So if the avascular necrosis also happens, we should not worry about that avascular necrosis. As I said, it may take long time to get collapse. Even though it shows avascular necrosis, it may take long time to collapse. Even it takes long time to collapse. To develop arthritis, it may take some more time. Even if arthritis takes place, many patients are asymptomatic for many months or years. So unless they are going to be symptomatic and need a fusion, it will take few years down the line. So at least till that time, they enjoy the movements, they enjoy the pain-free normal activities level. That's why we told it's very important to maintain the bone stock and maintain the height. So that's very important. Maintain the joint movements is very important. Because later on, even if you want to do a fusion, if the stock is maintained, if we do a fusion, so that the secondary impact on the other joints are less. If we change the anatomy and do a fusion directly, tibiocalcaneal, then stress to the your midfoot and the talonavicular calcaneal cuboid is very, very high. And these patients will become arthritic in the other joints very quickly. But when you maintain the hind foot height, even if you do a tibio talonavicular, I mean, sorry, Tello, uh, tibio tello calcaneal fusion, they walk very well. Many times you may not know whether this patient had a fusion or not. It's like a ankle fusion. Sometimes even the hind foot fusion also will have a normal walking with the good footwear. So you should make that's why I said the height, maintaining the height is very important. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your nice presentation. And I would like to thank our honorable academic panel for being with us. And now I would like to uh, close this session today as uh, because of time constraints. Uh, dear viewers, hope you all are benefited and especially all level doctors are benefited with this presentation. And uh, please stay tuned with us. And we will see you in the next Friday with another topic with academic panels and our honorable speaker. And I would like to thank our uh, uh, sponsor, that is Renata Pharmaceuticals Limited, for being with us. And definitely Raj TV. Uh, for being with us and thank you our honorable uh, presenter dr sundar sir and thank you our honorable academic panel dr rajiv raman sir and professor jahangir sir for being with us so everybody thank you for being with us and thank you from orthopedic solution academy bye 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 you are watching raj tv jagar watching bangladesh please subscribe our channel